And we should wait a little bit, or could be, well, whatever you please. Or okay, let's continue. Okay, uh, let's start over again. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm Fede Teunissen, I'm the artistic leader of uh, Slagwerk Den Haag, pronounced in Dutch. Um, to actually to start right away about the essence, what the group is, um, the name Slagwerk in Dutch means uh, Slagzeug, of German, so that's percussion, percussion de Haag. Uh, and in tonight's concert here at Zagreb, at the festival, which is by the way a great festival, um, is also for us, in a way, a new journey, t journey to define what percussion is for the 21st century. Um, uh, I really feel we are going towards a new era in percussion, in sounds. I think per percussionists always have been, or percussion instruments have been used to express the most contemporary sounds of our society. Uh, but sounds actually in our society change, so that means that Percussionists need to change and they need to broaden their instruments. <laughs> A very funny story is that the, the, the first percussionist who played the music by John Cage, great American composer, who did lots of experimental percussion, actually none of those players were percussionists. They were like artists or bookbinders, just people who love to make music and do experimental stuff. So there was a lot of freedom there, and I think for any mus musician, it's uh, I think obligatory to have an extremely open mind and to always search for for your sounds. <laughs> Tonight we played, for example, three fingerprints, and it started off as a small project. Like, let's see what happens if you, you know, ask a composer to to write a very personal piece. And also, the, 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 there was a ni very nice rule in, in, in these compositions, the fingerprints. We were um, given the assignment to choose 10 sounds, but actually none of them could be of our existing instruments because we already knew them. So they had to be fresh, they had to be new, they had to be something different. And that right away opens up your mind and your ears when you start to really look for your own sounds. In a way, we played the sounds for the composer, Arnold Marinussen, and his job was actually just to structure the sounds. So, and I think composition for me, at the end, is nothing more actually than structuring sounds. So we, we, we do need, we always need composers. Composers are always have to be there in society to, to help musicians to continue the journey, the musical journey that we all have. in our experience with working with composers. Um, it never is like this with great composers that they just you know, hand in a piece and say, you play it like this. No, mostly you go into a studio and you do your research and you work together, you search for the sounds. And then you, know, you construct the piece in a way together, but the composer is always there you know, to say, okay, this is my choice and he, you know, he's the one who makes the final, uh, the final draw of the piece. But, uh, but I do like and I do believe in this interaction uh, that also I think connects to I think what is needed for the future in general for people that are really open-minded, uh, that are eager, they're willing to learn to be flexible and not just sit there and do your job and play your snare drum, for example. So we call ourselves a percussion group, but maybe we are more like a sound group. We just uh, investigate sounds and in a way it's a coincidence that we play percussion, maybe. Well, going back to the function of a composer, because you're talking about what's the function of a composer and this hierarchy. Um, even, you know, within 20th century music, even with some of the contemporary music ensembles, I really feel we are still caught sometimes in this almost 19th century kind of structure, like there's a conductor in front, there's an ensemble, you play your notes, you take a bow, and that's, you know, that's it. And the composers from those days, what you would say, for example, Ligeti, or uh, uh, even composers, I mean, great composers like, um, for example, Messian, in a way they, 
they always used, how you would say, in a way more conventional percussion instruments like the xylorimba or the xylophone and the rainbow or the vibraphone. These were, in a way, known instruments. And so the, the composer in the classic tradition, they, they just structure the sound, they make a form and they see actually which sound fits on which place. I, I teach also in the Hay Conservatory and you have got the sonology department. And sonology is what the word is, it's about sound. It's totally investigation about sound, not about structure or form. And I think um, what I see is that, you know, you see that on the, when you look on the street, young people, they have headphones on, everybody has their own music on their, on their head and they, they listen to their own sounds. And I think young people are really interested in sounds, in interesting sounds. And what I always notice if you go to a concert and I play a bongo or a woodblock and everybody knows the sound, but if you play something that nobody knows, everybody goes a little bit to the front, which I'm not allowed for the camera, <laughs> to, 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 it, 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 it opens up the mind, a fresh sound. Um, and I think the underground scene is really busy in all extremes, you know, of noise, feedback, are, are busy with finding those new sounds. And I think the sound is the connection to the new young audience, I think, that has to come to contemporary music concerts. And I think the, you know, the, the high-class culture, in a way, I don't believe I think I, I, I always try, you know, to satisfy the, con the, the conventional audiences, but I think you cannot satisfy them with the things sometimes we do, because they simply uh, won't get used to it. <laughs> I think we have to uh, rejuvenate or to a new young audience that goes to a concert in a completely different way. I mean, that's, that's what I like about this festival. People walk in with a beer, they sit on a chair, it's less formal, people are more open, they're very spontaneous, they react. Um, when I play on the Holland Festival in Holland, uh, people are sitting in tuxedo, they, uh, they give a nice applause when they have to, and they go afterwards to the bar because they have to do their social networking with their friends. But I really feel in this festival like people are really interested, just, they're very curious, they want to see and they want to experience, and I don't think they, they judge so quickly. I mean, they're really, they're really open-minded. But it is not over yet.